Welcome to another little post-processing video on this channel. It's been silent here for the past three weeks and the reason is that I was first traveling to Morocco to lead a nine-day photo tour for Wild Morocco and then I went directly to Mallorca for some additional exploring and photographing. The photo tour being my first turned out to be great. We had just three participants who were all very good photographers so the focus of the tour was really getting everybody to the right places at the right time and from there everybody could just be creative. With such a small group I was also able to capture quite a lot of photos, one of which I want to process now. And what I want to show you is how I can do some HDR processing for a cityscape photo in Lightroom and later blend in some areas which contain motion in Photoshop. This way I can combine the easy to use HDR functionality in Lightroom with some manual blending and for cityscapes I tend to do this more and more. If you remember my last video about capturing light streaks in Hamburg, there I did something similar. First blending a clean HDR and then adding the light trails from other exposures. So let's get started. So I'm here in Lightroom and what I've done is I've already selected a few photos of this uh, Gemini of Na in Marrakesh, uh, which was the first place we visited with the group. So we're on top of a, a little rooftop bar and you have this beautiful view and yeah this is the green marked images is just the selection i want to process now and what you have here it's a bracketed exposure where i did five brackets so this really bright one i don't think i need it but i'll leave it in anyway so five bracketed exposures and then i've selected a few others which are like six seconds and i have another eight seconds and here i have like 10 seconds which I'll use to add in some motion here. And I'll also take some motion from this photo. But first things first, um, I want to get the baseline, which is the HDR photo. So I just select all the five photos and then just go to photo, photo merge, HDR. And here I don't bother with any auto line because uh, I was on a tripod, a very firm tripod and there's uh, nothing to align here. Also, I leave off this auto tone because it never gets good results. I'd rather do this manually. Also, I don't want any deghosting because down here there's a lot of motion and the deghosting algorithm would just mess this up and I'd rather blend in manually later what I want. So I just leave those options as default and press on merge. Now what popped up here in my selection is in addition to the photos I had selected previously, here's an HDR photo. So this is what I want to process first and I just go to the basic tab. Oh no, let's rather do the um, stuff down here first. So lens corrections, enable profile corrections, though they are very important. I always do this and yeah, leave a bit of the vignetting. Then I go to the details. I set this radius to minimum, amount to just like 10 or less and bring up the masking a bit. And if you've seen my start to finish tutorials, you know why I set sharpening to very low values here. It's just to reduce any artifacts and I do the sharpening later in the process. So those basic settings in place, I can now go here up to this basic set and um, I don't think I need to do anything to white balance here because what I like is this transition from blue to orange. Maybe give it a little bit more magenta, so minus five rather than minus seven. And now I can do um, the HDR and I can just pull up the shadows and I can do a lot here because with the HDR I have a lot of space and I can bring up the exposure a bit and counter it by bringing down the highlights but maybe not too much because I don't want to lose the highlights here. So maybe bring down the whites a bit. Let's look closely here just to make sure I don't remove any detail. I mean, it can be a bit wide, that's no problem. Guess like this, but I think this is going to look a little bit too painterly, um, which is also where the manual blending comes in later. So let's see now looking at those very harsh contrasts here just to see if I have all the details 
down here this looks a little funky let's see if i can bring this up a bit so and those areas are definitely will blend in later and also here where you have the movement and yeah this is the area where the hdr algorithm or the blending in lightroom mostly doesn't work properly where you have so much movement and yeah i could have tried with the ghosting but as i explained earlier i rather do this part manually so i'll just get all the details from the static parts basically using the functionality in lightroom which works very well here so looking at the lights and also this details this looks very good and then i do some manual blending afterwards yeah so let's just see this looks okay for me what i can now do is let's look at the hsl maybe do some little fine tuning of the u so maybe make the blue give it a little more magenta also this one and let's see if we have to remove a bit of magenta the saturation this is usually what i do for night photos so decrease the magenta tint a little bit and let's see what happens when i play with the orange more less maybe a little less and yeah that's really all i need to do here the rest will be rather done in photoshop maybe let's see somewhere i'm losing a little bit of detail so let's bring up the blacks just a touch so i really have all the details and then zoom in here on those areas i think that's a quite good baseline so what i want to do now is i want to sync the settings and i will just sync it to the images which i want to bring over into photoshop so this one and this exposure here maybe also bring over this one and those two and now i go to sync um, check all but then i'll uncheck what i did with the highlights and shadows because that's a little bit too much also this exposure black and white clipping basically i remove all the settings to basic tone and we'll do it uh, differently but i'll leave all the others so i'll synchronize it and now i'll just take this one <clears throat> and do a proper tonal settings here so not as much as in the hdr something like this and this i will now sync over to the other images oh let's just do the basic tone and now for those three which are very bright i do the typical stuff i bring down the exposure make it match a little bit more the exposure of this one because this will make the blending much easier so basically giving it a minus two bring this up a bit so what i want is really to have the exposures of those images match as good as possible also this one need to go down a bit bring up the shadows to counter this let's see the before and after not the before the hdr and the non-hdr and the same here i think those i can also bring down same as this one so let's just sync this okay now with those i now just export all the images so what i do i export as tiff no compression pro photo rgb 16 bits and i have everything set off no sharpening no resizing i just export and later I open those images as layers in Photoshop. This now puts all the images into one file and let's bring down this HDR to the bottom because this is the base layer. Then I take those two which are basically the two images which are already part of the HDR so they are merged and if you see here they align so I will blend those first and later i have to align the others so i put a black mask on them and yeah i don't have to bother with any luminosity masks here because this baseline already contains all the blending for the high dynamic range parts as for example up here in the minaret then as i said around the images so all these parts where i would have to do luminosity masking if i want to blend in photoshop are already perfectly masked 
what I want to do now rather is work on the motion and for example from this very long exposure I want to take the motion down here in the streets and also uh, I want to fix some of those areas for example if I just take something from here I can basically painting with white fix those areas and it's not too bad if those go a little bit white I just paint here with like 50% and cleaning up those areas bringing in some of the motion and cleaning up the areas which Lightroom messed up during the blending also down here bring in just parts of the original exposure also here everywhere where it looks a little bit funky I can do very simple blending now and it's just painting without any mask also down here maybe here and back here where all the actions going on this is also where Lightroom didn't do such a good job because there's just too much going on and yeah just can't figure out what areas to use and I just do this manually also I can look at this area here they were throwing some well, light lights into the air and I just bring in this part from the single exposure basically just to remove this light streak so see the before and after so I can paint in a bit here to smooth out the blend but as I said all without any masks and now I bring in a bit more motion from the long exposure also going with like 50% and just painting in here which creates a little more motion and I'm careful not to paint in the highlight areas because those take away details and I oh don't know let's bring this back this looked better before it's just really creative drawing here and if I shift click on the mask it basically reveals the complete layer and I can have a look what details are contained there so maybe here this guy let's bring in a bit from the longer exposure and let's see what's up here shift click just a bit more and back here in the area where all the actions going and even more of the motion okay so with those two or three layers really blended see the before and after so all those uh, strange blendings here are gone they are basically fixed I can now merge those down and then blend in other stuff and you see for those I have a little shift so for those I really have to align but let's first check those two here this one seems to be exactly aligned already so I can maybe just blend those two without any auto align so let's bring those two down here also put a black mask on them and do a little bit more blending though. let's see if I can with just 30% bring in a little bit more motion it's basically combining different photos which show different movement blending them with like some 50% opacity or 30 or even lower creates some interesting or even more interesting motion and let's get in here see if I have a bit more here maybe reveal some details here this looks nice if somebody's standing within those people like ghosts moving around him let's see if we have something different maybe here bring this guy in some more motion you can really create some interesting images like this the key is really just to take enough images so first do the HDR and then take additional shots which you can later combine to show more motion and while working on this image now and adding all this motion I realized that it might be nice to also have some areas of stillness so what I did I went back to Lightroom and took this shorter exposure from this HDR which is just like one second I also uh, synced it with all the settings down here uh, lens correction and stuff and I exported it too and brought it into Photoshop the, this layer one here and what I can now do is to add a bit of contrast we have all this motion and in some areas 
I just blend in from this shot explosion to add a few yeah, areas where there's not much motion. So where I have something for the viewer to yeah, remain a bit. So all this motion and then in between some areas where motion is frozen, so to say. So not really, it's like one second exposure, but still I might add some more interest also here. Give it a little bit more detail from the shot exposure. Let's see what we have over here. This actually looks even nicer from this one second exposure. So adding the different exposure times now. And also this guy, it's a nice addition here. Having his face kind of looking. A few people here. Now this might be too distracting if I put her in because she's looking out of the frame and it's very close to the edge. This one giving a little bit more definition and also add a few more, a little bit more here. This guy, let's see what's with this one. We we'll leave it down here. Well, not too much, but definitely some areas. This looks quite interesting. Let's look down here. But I think you get the idea. Now go over the image and add a few areas from the shot exposure also to make it a little more interesting. Also back here in this area, maybe there's a little too much motion. So just paint in something from the shot exposure. So I think I now have a nice mix. I will now flatten down everything. And now also see this one exposure if this might add a little bit more interest somewhere but to blend it I definitely now have to align because those two are no longer aligned so edit auto align layers this will take care of this little misalignment I can again put a black mask on this one and now again do a little bit more blending where I want so let's see if I find some areas which are interesting. Yeah, but I don't think there's so much now. Maybe with like 20% and a bit more here. Let's see back there. It's a little more definition, so maybe add a bit more this exposure. But I think um, that's enough for now. Down here, a few more people, or a bit more motion. Let's see if I can find something down here. Not really. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Now I again flatten this down. And yeah, that's basically the blending. So combining HDR, which you use to get a baseline for the whole frame, and then just manually blending in parts of uh, different other exposures and you're just being creative and you don't need any special masks like luminosity masks for that you just paint uh, the only important thing what you have to do in the beginning what I showed you in Lightroom is try to match the exposures a bit so do the HDR processing then sync the settings you did to color or white balance and then also adjust the exposures in the other images to roughly match what you get from the HDR image and then the blending is really just drawing in Photoshop. So now from here what I'll do, I crop the image and do my typical processing which I show in all its depth and length in my start to finish tutorials. So if you're interested in that, check out my homepage. Uh, I have several tutorials on landscapes and panoramas and night photos. I actually don't have a dedicated one on cityscape photography, but maybe that's coming in the future. Anyways, the techniques I show on the landscape images, you can apply those also to cityscapes. So just have a look there and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.